What are the best tools for us to help prevent conflict as best we can, because there's only so much we can do, is to leverage and use the tool of feedback. Feedback can be very difficult both to give and to receive because giving it to someone else may seem like we're criticizing them. Receiving it from someone else can feel like somebody's attacking us personally. Feedback is a cup that only the strong can drink. And for so many years of my life, I shied away from feedback, both receiving it as well as giving it because it felt very uncomfortable. But it can be a huge gift. And unfortunately, many times our confidence and our ego get in the way of using feedback for the gift that it is. I learned that the hard way on a trip that I took with my wife for the Christmas holiday to Yosemite National Park. Anybody been to Yosemite? A few folks here. We went there for the Christmas holiday, wanted to experience a white Christmas. This was the scene when we arrived. Beautiful, beautiful landscape. The perfect scene for exploring, but the worst scene for getting lost. When we got there, we decided to take a hike to Yosemite Falls, this giant 2,000 foot waterfall. We didn't have any cell phone reception in the area, so we grabbed a map. I figured out the route for us to take. We got ready to head out on our hike. Once I knew exactly which direction we were going, I did what most confident leaders would do my wife, her brother, his fiance. So I silently appointed myself the unofficial leader of the pack. <laughs> and I felt like, I know where I'm going. I've got this. A few miles after we started hiking, we crossed this bridge. And there was a fork in the road that I wasn't necessarily expecting. And so my wife turned to me and said the words that no trusted guy wants to hear from his followers. <laughs> Are we lost? <laughs> now ladies, if you ask a man if he's lost, even if he is, guess what the answer is? So I turned to my wife and said, lost? <laughs> lost? Like I told you, got this. And I had it for about one more mile. Oh, no. when we ran into another fork that wasn't on the map. And I realized that I had just marched my team one mile the wrong direction in the freezing cold. So I turned to my wife and I said, honey, I think you were right. You missed the turn about a mile back that you did mention. You could probably guess what her response was. I told you so if you would just listen. So we backtracked and after we got back to our the initial fork in the road, we found a building that had an ancient relic that was stuck on the wall. For my fellow millennials in the room, this is what they call a <laughs> Now the problem is, I looked all over and there was no Wi-Fi password anyway. <laughs> While I was trying to figure out how to use this antique device, <laughs> help shows up. Little did I know <laughs> that on Christmas Day, in Yosemite, Santa drives around saving lost hikers. <laughs> So thanks to Santa's help, we got back on track and we made it to our destination to Yosemite Falls. It turns out that day, Santa was a much better leader than I was. But when I thought about what I learned from that experience, I realized that I was so confident in the direction I was going that I didn't even listen to the feedback and opinions of those that I was working with on my team. And many times, Especially gentlemen in the room, our confidence and ego can get in the way of us leveraging and using feedback to get what it is. When you're moving in a new direction, take the time to slow down and seek out. Don't just be willing to listen to feedback, which was a mistake I made, but seek out the feedback from those that you work with. 
Now, how do we seek out feedback? Very simple question that you can ask, which I call the feedback challenge is, what do I do well? And what can I do better? Those two questions, you'll learn a lot about yourself because it's hard for us to be objective from the inside looking out. But if we ask our colleagues, our boss, what do I do well and what can I do better? You can learn a lot. Now, you also may be in the situation where you're giving feedback to other people. So if you are giving feedback because it's appropriate, it's necessary, here's four principles to help you in delivering feedback to others. Number one, of course, be honest. Don't skate around the truth because it feels more comfortable. Number two, be clear, back to our common theme of clarity. Number three, be timely. Don't let something fester. If something needs to be addressed, do your best within 24 to 48 hours to have a conversation. Maybe not right on the spot, but you want to address it in a timely manner and not let months go by where now things get blown out of proportion. And last but not least, make sure that you're tactful. And praise in public address problems in private. Be thoughtful of the other person because you are trying to help them grow. So the way that you approach the situation with tact can make all the difference between them growing and getting better from the situation, or just like Paco was mentioning, learning a new way, or getting upset and feeling defensive because they feel like they're attacking. Here's a great example of some feedback that was given. So a gentleman that sent a tweet out to the leading cell phone provider in the UK called O2. Said, hey O2, please get your SMS or text message working. I sent this girl 246 texts last night. <laughs> and then a four o'clock. Coming up for me. What an interesting scenario. I love O2's response. Great feedback, it was timely, it was tactful, it was clear, it was honest. Here's what O2 tweeted back. 